Hello and welcome to the Sexist Anti-Feminist Discrimination Alert News Network for the purposes of Davies Government Class or S-A-D-N-F-T-P-O-D-G-C. My name is Keon Anderson. I'll be your host for tonight. It's a lovely evening right now and we're going to go outside to David Zarin uh, out in the fields who will be reporting on sports right now. David Zarin. All right, f*** me. Well, thank you, Keon. And recently, our competition news network, Fox News, while broadcasting on the recent sports action, broadcasted a soccer report that was far from fair and balanced on the gender front. Check it out and tell us what you think. As you probably may have guessed by the previous video, today we'll be focusing on the world of women's athletics and the wider world of the feminist movement for this matter. Uh, for a long time, you know, females have been discriminated from the world of sports, from uh, de jure segregation, from the fact that they're not given equal treatment under the law and they're prevented from participating in male sports, and from um, de facto discrimination, in the sense that society believes that females are inferior to males in terms of athletics and will give them less coverage and less support. And these two factors have largely contributed to keep women out of sports. For example, in 1967, um, Katherine Schweitzer tried to enter the Boston Marathon, uh, but she was prevented by the rules from doing so. She still persisted, showing the great spirit of the feminist movement, uh, entering the marathon wearing a wig. Though she was discovered partway through and was chased down by the officials, she managed to outrun them. and place pretty well in the marathon. So the feminist movement needed to prevent these two concerns, de uh, facto discrimination and de jure discrimination. In 1972, uh, the jure segregation was brought down with the Title IX, which was part of the Equal Education Amendment, which made it impossible for high schools and colleges to discriminate uh, for sports based on race, I mean, based on ethnicity. Uh, this can be seen, the effects of this can be seen when, um, before Title IX, only 16,000 athletes, female athletes, could contribute and play in sports. After Title IX, 150,000 played in sports. Uh, there have been 31 cases against, uh, 31 Title IX cases in 1994. All of them went for women. So as you can see, the problem of de jure discrimination has largely gone down, but as we brought up previously in the video, society still believes that women play an inferior role. This can be seen through the amount of coverage that they've been given, by the amount of jokes that people make about uh, female sports leagues, and feminists have still not been able to overcome this obstacle, but they ultimately believe that um, a fair and just society should not discriminate based on laws and based on societal prejudices. Thank you for this report. Um, that's it.